Welcome to the Varsity 845 Wrestling Podcast. I'm Sal Interdonato, wrestling beat writer for the record, here with Josh Conklin. Josh is a wrestling ph- photographer, wrestling guru. He shoots a lot of uh, tournaments for us, and we're talking about the big one here uh, during the regular season, the Eastern States Classic, coming up Friday, Saturday at SUNY Sullivan. Um, just one of the, you know, we, we talk about it every year, Josh. This is where you really find out as a wrestler, where you are and what you have to work on. I was talking to Evan Barsic last night after his 200th win, and he's like, uh, you know, everything is built for February in the state tournament, but this, this Eastern States, the, the guys he'll face, he could see in the state tournament. So uh, it's it's a good barometer for uh, these wrestlers, right? Yeah, the, uh, this is the part of the year where like, a lot of these kids at this point, they might not even have wrestling really out of the sectional that much. This is a, a good part of it. It's a good point in the year where they get to see where they stack up or, around the state. Yeah, let's get into the, the biggest news right now is, um, you know, last night when the seating came out, there was one name absent from the seating, and that was uh, Warwick Senior Ryan Farrow, uh, returning state champion. Uh, he's at 160 pounds this year. I saw Ryan wrestle on Tuesday against Minisink, and he beat Tim Ganuncio uh, 9-2. to I talked to him after the match. I talked to him about wrestling at the Eastern States and um, talked to his coach, Phil Zumlowski, uh Thursday morning, and... You know, Ryan's not going to go in the tournament. He was uh, banged up a little bit at the shoreline over last weekend. It's kind of precautionary. Um, Coach Zumlowski said, you know, that you can get up to five matches or more in this tournament, and they just don't want to take the chance of um, uh, getting getting injured or further. So, um, you know, it, it really hurts Section 9 not having Ryan in the tournament uh, this weekend, Josh. Yeah, that's, that's a big blow for Section 9 because the, the – one less, one, he very easily could have won the title and it's just the one less champion they're going to have. And the, it's a little bummer for the fans because he's a fun kid to watch. He's very really dominant, so yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah, you kind of understand it. You kind of you, you, every like like I was talking with Edmund Barzak. Everything's so geared up for for February and the state championship, and you don't really want you know to re-injure anything. Uh, Zumowski said he'll be back in action Wednesday against Valley Central, so it's not. A serious injury, but it's something that they just don't want to take a chance on. So, so now you look at you know the seating and you look at the field, and now you know probably Section Nine's best chance to be in the finals is now you know in the, in the uh, hands of Ryan Elfson, Goshen Senior, two hundred and twenty pounder. He's the second seed. Um, he was looking up. I was just on the internet yesterday, Josh, just looking up you know intermat rankings, and I saw. Uh, Ryan, they're at 15 in the nation right now, and um, I guess the the guy who he could meet in the finals, um, Walt Whitman's uh, Teron Robinson, is 14 in the country. So those guys are, you know, we talked about it. Th- th- these guys are pretty much on a, a collision course for the finals at 220, right? Yeah, it's, it's gonna be rematch, it should be rematch for the state finals, which was a fun one. Uh, Teron Robinson is a big thrower, and Brian Ellison is uh, is bigger than Toronto, so he, he's not afraid to throw with him. So it should be another exciting final if they get there together. Yeah, I was looking up Ryan. Uh, I have him at twenty one and zero this year. He's he's wrestled sixteen contested matches and has sixteen pins. So I mean, he's just and we saw this last year. He was a pinning machine, um, really solid wrestle. Go, going to Clarion Division One, um, you know, to wrestle in college. Um, We'll see what he can do. I I I think that um, I think he I think he has a really good shot at bringing home bringing home uh, you know a championship for Goshen. Yeah, I, I think he gets the better of Tron this time around because uh, uh, Tron not much of a gas tank so if you can get out of the first grade against him, your chance of winning increase that much. Yeah, and then we we talked about Evan Barzak a little bit. He's the fourth seed out of 152 pounds, but we didn't really talk about the weight class. Which is loaded, Josh. I mean, it's 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 a really uh, tough weight class with, you know, Peter Pappas, two-time state finalist in there from Long Island, um, Hunter Richard from Holland Pat, and he's a two-time state champion. Those are the top two seeds. Um, you know, it, 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 Evan's gonna Evan's gonna have to earn this championship in a really tough weight class. Yeah, it's a, like you said, absolutely loaded. Even behind Evan, Tyree Spire and Charlie Spot of Long Beach are really tough kids. That the nine seed. Uh, Billy Simpson wouldn't hurt the uh, uh, county finalist in Suffolk County, and Evan Evan's got to look to get past Peter 
probably in the semis if he wants to he wants to make it to the finals, and it, it's going to be a hard road for him to get there. Yeah, he didn't make it any easy on him, but you know he he's a guy who really can 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 wrestle with just about anyone, maybe in the country. He he had a he had a really strong off season in wrestling. He went to the Excalibur tournament in Pennsylvania and won a championship there. Yeah, you know, he's definitely. It seems like when the competition rises, he brings his level up too. So. Yeah, you're exactly right. He 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 uh he like he, he wrestles better against the better kids, and we'll see how he does this weekend. Gotcha. And then um, when the seating came out at 182 pounds, um, a Walk Hill senior, Mike Fakashezi, uh is is the two seed, and you know he's beaten two of the top kids in the state this year already, in Evan Frank and James Hogue of um, uh, Mattituck, and he's kind of earned that two seed this year, Josh. And, you know, the number one seed is one of the top kids in the country, Louis Deprez of Hilton. But it would it, be interesting to see how, how Mike does because he was thinking about going 170 at the beginning of the year, didn't really wasn't really comfortable there, and now is at 182 where he's had a lot of success this year. So we'll see how he does this weekend. Yeah, it was, it was big wins over Frank and Hogue earlier this year. Uh, hopefully, he can keep that keep that uh, magic going here at Eastern States and, and head on to the finals to face Louis. But he said top, he's number two in the nation at 180 pounds is strong. But uh, Mike Chazy, very great wrestler. See how he does against him. Yeah, he's a solid wrestler, a strong wrestler. I mean, last year he uh, won a blood round match to place in the um, in the state, and he couldn't wrestle his last two state matches matches because he got a concussion in that match. So he placed six, but he he could have placed third in the state last year if he was able to get on the mat. So um, you know he he's kind of proven himself. Now this is the next step for him. Um, now we can break down. Um, let's just go over real quick. There's a couple names here that are not going to be um, wrestling in the tournament due to injury. And um, you know the biggest name is is a guy you know well. Um, t- talk talk about Yanni not being able to uh, compete the rest of the season. Yeah, uh, Yanni Jakimahas out of Hilton, uh, two-time cadet world champion, four-time New York State champion. He's won over 200, he's won over 200 straight matches in high school. Uh, phenomenal wrestler. He's a uh, good kid, too. And unfortunately, he's done for the year. He had double elbow surgery. And, but uh, speaking of the other day, he's going to be there this weekend supporting his little brother. So we get the same round. Yeah, his little brother is one of the top 113 pounders in this tournament, right? Yeah, he's the top seed at 113 and uh, uh, finalist here last year at 99. Gotcha. And just two Section 9 uh, wrestlers, guys who were who are returning section champs who did, who haven't wrestled yet this season. Uh, Kendall Elstrom of Monroe Woodbury has been injured, not wrestling in this tournament yet. And Connor Griner, from what I hear, he's doing a little uh, working out in the wrestling room, but uh, had an ankle injury in the preseason, not going to go this weekend. Um so a couple more names that won't be on the mat for Section 9. But let's just break down these weight classes. Um, you know, we have, before we do that, let's just talk about the teams that are here. Wyoming Seminary is going to be here. Um, they're not bringing their main team this year. Their main team is facing Blair Academy on Friday night in a really uh, a nationally like ranked match there. And uh, they're sending six B-team wrestlers. Uh, Benny Baker at 138, probably their best wrestler that they're sending. Um and you got Noble Maine, you got LaSalle College of Pennsylvania, you got team, you know, Danbury, Connecticut's always there with some solid wrestlers. So um, that that that's for the teams in the fifteenth uh, annual Eastern States Classic. Let's break down ninety nine pounds, Josh, and uh, I guess uh, Brandon Nunez is the guy to beat at that weight class, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. John Brown, the public schools in New York City. He's uh, the senior. So he's got the experience and. Place in the state tournament last year, he's going to be the one to beat here. Uh, we got the other seeds. We got uh, Christian going East Fork South Manor. He's 22 and 2 this year with 20 bonus points and only both have lost coming at, at 106. So he's, he's, he's going to look to make some noise here along with some other kids. Christian Procross from Cornwall is the 21st uh, seed. Uh, looking to see what he can do against uh, um, state competition and even Justin Rouse from Middletown. It'll be interesting to see how they stack up against the kids around the state. I was kind of surprised in the seating where Minisink, uh, Minisink's wrestler was seated because he's only lost two matches all year and they were up at 106. This is his first varsity season, Nick Piccarello, but I thought he would get a better seed. The weight class must yeah, be pretty tough then if he's 
he's below he's below Morales and Prokosh, right? Yeah, especially at 99, where, where a lot of these kids are, this is like their first RC season ever, so it's especially uh, strange to see out there. I, I didn't get the seating. Uh, that, 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 that's just me. That's just me talking out loud here, Josh. Uh, at 106, uh, Dylan Ryder of Half Hollow Hills West. He's uh, he won that at 99 pounds here last year, and you know, he's he's the number one seed. Um, who's who's his competition going to be in this tournament? You think, Josh? Uh, I see his competition come from Zach Redding. I don't believe they ever wrestled before, uh, but uh, Redding, real tough kid, took seventh here last year in their county, but Dylan Ryder. Uh, hammer on top. Uh, I, I think that he comes out with another victory this year. He's face. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and 106, uh, Dylan Earl of Monroe Woodbury is the fifth seed in this weight class. So uh, Dylan's wrestled at 113 some of the season, trying you know trying to see where he can what he can do at 106 pounds. Has a pretty good seed. See if he can make the quarterfinals here, right? Yeah, yeah, make the quarterfinals. Yeah. He can strong possibly make the quarterfinals. He's faced uh, Preston West there, and uh, Dylan wrestled him to a, an overtime match last year. So it'll be interesting to see how that works this time around. Gotcha, gotcha. 113 pounds. Uh, we talked about um, Yanni's brother, Greg, right? You can help me out with the last name. Yeah, Greg Giacomo Hollis. Uh, he'll top seed here. Uh, uh, state champ last year, beating Ryder, who he lost to the Eastern State Finals. Strange seating here. Uh, uh, Scotto at the five seed, and he's got a Rocky Point. Well, uh, he has the most exciting match of the state tournament last year. Jack Mahalis in the quarterfinals, and uh, Jack Mahalis yet to score an offensive point on him in two matches. So I think that Scotto gets the better of him this time around and uh, takes on a title. Yeah, a couple Section Nine representatives here. Marco Vespa's the fourth seed, um, sophomore from Monroe Woodbury. He's had a really solid season, Marco. And um, the 12th seed will be Tyler Lynch of Minisink. Um, and those two, Vespa and Lynch, have gone back and forth over the last couple of years. Um, so see how those guys can do. They, they should. They, I, I expect them to represent Section 9 pretty well in the, this tournament, Marco and uh, Tyler. Yeah, well, I think both of them have the, especially Marco was the fourth seed, I think both of them have a, uh, a really good chance of, of play, uh, getting on the podium here. And, uh, yeah, Tyler Lynch, and at a at a twelve seed, the person that has a win over Marco, so at the four seed side, I think it's very possible that both of them get on the podium. Yeah, it should be interesting there. And then at one twenty, top seed Adam Busiello of Eastport um, South Manor. Yeah, you know, another state champion, another another guy who should should be at the top of the podium there uh, this weekend. Uh, talk about that weight class. Yeah, it would actually be a surprise. Uh, well, his competition would come from the four seed Jacob Camacho of Danbury. He's ranked 13th in the country at uh, 120 pounds. And, uh, I would be surprised, though, if uh, it, there's not a major there from Adam and that he doesn't pin his way to the rest of the tournament. He's just on another level, and it's he's, he's a special wrestler. Yeah, when you're when you're he's a sophomore, right? Yeah, he's a sophomore, and he's committed to Penn State. Yeah. Already. Enough said. No. no. Enough said. Let's move on. To, let's move on to one twenty six. What do you see at one hundred and twenty six pounds? Oh, we have a pair of teammates seated one and two. With John Gomez, state champ at Locust Valley, and another state state finalist, Hunter Dussel. Uh, I see these two on a crash course to the finals against each other, and that'll be interesting to see who who comes out on top there between the two teammates. And looking down here, we have. Uh, uh, Rob Satriano is high central at the, at, all the way down at 20, but he's a tough kid. He wrestles uh, really close matches against some of these kids, and I think he's going to be able to see how he might be able to sneak in a 7th or 8th place on the podium. Yeah, if that holds true and, and, and the two Locust Valley kids get into the finals, I can't remember an Eastern States finals with kids from the same school in it, so that should be interesting. Uh, 132 is one of those weight classes where you look at the top seed pretty much should be should be the the the, the dominant force in Jacory Teamer of a uh, Long Beach. Um, you know he's won here before, he's a state champion. Um, anybody anybody can give him a run in this weight class, Josh. Uh, uh, the really I see the competition wouldn't wouldn't be till the finals when he's faced Dane Heverling of Alexander, who's a two-time New York State champion, three-time finals. You wouldn't normally say that someone that looks to be the clear favorite when the other person alongside of him. Is a two-time state champion, but Teamer is just 
he's just that good. Fargo national champ. He's just he's uh he's on he's on another level than the rest of these kids. He is certainly one of the more athletic kids I've seen on the mat at the Eastern States in the past. So, uh, and 138, you got Vito Raju, a three-time Eastern States uh, champion. I've done some research, and quick research tells me I only found one four-time champ, Cody Ruggirello, the Valley Central grad from 2006 to 2009, won four titles. So, you know, if uh, Vito wins, if maybe when Vito wins, um, he'll be he'll be joining some elite company there. Um, who you see there that might be able to give him a match? Uh, the two seeds from Hop Hog, Jake Silverstein, was the finalist, uh, two, state finalist two years ago, and he against Teamer, and he took him to triple overtime. He's a really strong, underrated wrestler. I believe he is also ranked in the nation two, top twenty, mm. and he he's a solid technical wrestler, not flashy, but Vito like it like Teamer is on another level. So uh, he'll probably he look to major him in the final, sir. Yeah, I guess from the Section 9 contingent at 138, you got Don Vetrano as Section 9 champ last year. I think he's the ninth seed. Um, yes. you know, see, see if see if he can, he can he, you know, it's going to be some tough matches there, but maybe he can get on the middle stand for Minnesink Valley. Um, 145, you have uh, Frankie Gissendander from uh, Penfield. He's another yeah, returning state champ, returning Eastern States champ. Um I think we talked about this before about Washingtonville's Brandon Bo- Bobby and see where see where he's at this year. He's undefeated right now. He has wrestled Matt. He's been on and off the mat a little bit. Um, talk about him and maybe how he might be able to get a medal this weekend. Yeah, Bobby's one of those kids where undefeated, but he hasn't had much competition outside of Section Nine. So it'll be interesting to see this weekend how he stacks up against uh, competition from around New York State. Yeah, and I guess. Um, there's a couple other wrestlers and from Section 9. Maybe one is Drew, Drew Harrison from Port Jervis. A, a guy who's right up there ranked amongst the top in Section 9. And, you know, see, see where he, he's still he's still a young wrestler, right, Josh? See what he can do this um this weekend? Yeah, he's only a sophomore. And I, I've, I've wrestled with him before, and he's very, very strong for 145 pounds. Like, he, he, he's strong and he'll just come at you. He won't stop, he won't stop attacking for six minutes, so. You never know. He's a guy under the radar a little bit that could make some noise this weekend. Um, 152 we've talked about with uh, Evan Barzak, Peter Pappas, and you know Hunter Richard and those guys. Now 160, here's a guy we need to talk about in this podcast, Noah Carreri from Eldred. A senior who's who's really had an awesome year. He's really had this, the last two years he's really come on. And with Ryan Farrow out of that weight class now, Noah's the third seed at the weight. And, you know, he, he's right there where he could be in the finals this weekend, Josh. Yeah, uh, he had, he had a uh, top off a, a great season last year by, by placing the uh, New York State tournament after uh, an awesome quarterfinal match that got him in the uh, semis. He uh solid wrestler, very, very underrated. Uh, I don't get to see him all that much because of Eldred's travel schedule, so it would be great to see him this weekend to see how he stacks up. Yeah, I mean, he does a lot of off, you know, he does a lot of training outside of high school. He's he's been to Sir Wrestling in New Jersey, get some get some really pushed there. I'm really interested to see that weight class because now I guess Grant Cuomo of Brewster is the number one seed at that weight, and um, I, I think Evans, I, I think uh, you know he's he's right he's right there. Um, uh, Noah, sorry, I think Noah Noah Carreri is right there with him, you know, right right there with Cuomo. So we'll see how it goes this weekend. Um. One seventy. We're, 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 what are we looking at? One hundred and seventy pounds, there, Josh. Well, we got Tyler Barnes, the two seed, was placed third last year here, and Jason Hoffman, the one seed, took second. So those two look to be on a crash first. The finals. Sean Mosca from Carl Place Wheatley was a, I believe, state finals last year. So he'll look to, uh, to uh, crash that party there. But I see Jason Hoffman probably coming on top. He's nationally ranked, so. Talk about a Section 9 kid real quick, Mark O'Hannon. Another kid who's undefeated this year, having a really solid senior season, one at the Mid-Hudson, and where is he seated? I mean, in the, in, he is in the, the 20, 22nd seed. He's a 22nd seed? Yes. Uh, and there, Are there some Section 9 wrestlers ahead of him, I think, or no? We have, uh, yes, Newberg's uh, Max Capital is sure. 20, and then... Adonis Moreno is the 18th. Yeah, those all three of those guys are really, really are guys that go. And you know, you, I, 
I I think that maybe one it's an outside chance that maybe one of those three might be able to surprise some people and get on the medal stand. I mean, Max is only a freshman. Adonis Morano's a section finalist last year. Um, I think all those guys can go, and I'd be interested to see how they do this weekend. Yeah, Marco Hanian. I, I've seen him wrestle really tough matches against tough opponents. He's got a, an awkward style that confuses that a lot of people. So uh, he has a, he might have the best chance of those three that, from Section 9 that are seated to, to be in the top eight. No doubt. And then we, we talked about 182 a little bit with um, – Louis, we didn't really mention Louis Deprez too much of Hilton. He's one of the top wrestlers in the country. Um, you, we talked about Walk Hill's Mike Fekashezi, the second seed. Uh, Minnesink's Joe Yanis is right in there to, to, to be a potential medalist in this tournament too, right? Yeah, uh, Yanis coming in with the eighth seed. Uh, so if he pulled true, he should be on the podium. I, I think. He'll have, a, he'll have a tough time improving that as the kids ahead of him are, are, are pretty solid kids. But, yeah, I, I think that he could he could just easily be on the podium. Yeah, I think he only has one loss this year, possibly, to a New Jersey kid, too, so far. So he's really, really had a solid season. Um, uh, 195, uh, where where are we at there uh, for, for for the favorite? Uh, Long Beach is Elias Rodriguez. Is a is an incredibly talented kid. He'll wrestle from eighty two up to two twenty. He he'll wrestle anywhere and still pick up a pin for Long Beach and, and Matt Tuck Tanner Zagarino is another solid kid who's wrestled a lot of the times this year at two twenty, but he's down at ninety five and took third last year at D two, so he'll be another tough out. Yeah, and I think for uh, section nine as far as section nine, one hundred and ninety five pounders go in this tournament. You know, Andrew Covey is from Minnesink. Um I, I've seen him be very dominant on the mat this year, and we'll see if he he, he likes ten matches pretty fast. So we'll see how he how he can uh, do this. What, what do you think about his uh, chances in this tournament this weekend, Josh? He's coming in with a thirteen seed. Uh, I like you said he, he finished matches quick. I, I think that he could improve upon that and uh, have a seventh or eighth place and finish there and get on the podium. Nice. Uh, Two hundred and twenty. We've discussed with Ryan Ellison and Teron Robinson. 285, I believe Jake Warren of Burnt Hills is the top seed there. And I guess um, Section 9's uh, best chance at making a little bit of a run is Minnesink's Andrew Fenner, a kid who's really um, really improved from last year. Um, he's not just a big heavyweight anymore. He's he's gotten into better shape, I guess you could say, and his conditioning is a, a lot better. Um, he's a really tough football player, and... He's had a really good year so far. He hasn't. I, I know he hasn't lost in the section, and he's beaten some pretty tough kids. So, yeah, and, and this is the most, one of the most open weights here at uh, Eastern Bases. As none of these kids are 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 returning state place finishers, though there is the only returning state Eastern State finisher was is Jay Warren, who's the top seed, and uh, I think Deontay Wilson might have something to say about that for Amityville and its finals. I think. Yeah, and you look at also Middletown House Norris Gibson as an entry in this um in this tour in in the, in, in this weight class, and you know he's he's another kid who's just a a big kid, a, a football player, hard, hard not the easiest to score on, not the easiest to get off his feet. So um he he, sh he should make a little bit of a some noise in that weight class. Um, well we've broken down all fifteen weight classes. We'll be there uh, Friday for coverage, full coverage. You could check us out on. Uh, Check, check. I'll post uh, videos, um, results, anything I can. We'll do some periscoping on Varsity845's Twitter account. Hope you all give us a follow there. You can follow uh, Josh at, um, is it Real Josh Conklin on Twitter, Josh? Yeah, it's at Real Josh Conklin on Twitter and on Instagram at Josh Conklin Photos. Yeah, he'll have plenty of photos from the action, and then we'll just give you the best coverage that we absolutely possibly can this weekend appreciate you giving us a listen we'll sign off here for the varsity 845 podcast for josh Cochran. i'm sal and